Hi, my name is Eric Smeltzer, and I'm the pastor of the River Bible Church in Mountain Home, Arkansas. About eight years ago, the Lord started stirring the hearts of some of our people uh, to have a heart for those who are victims of sex trafficking in Arkansas. And out of that, Into the Light Ministry was born. And we are so thankful for your participation in this ministry. Let's go to the Lord in prayer on behalf of Into the Light. Father God, we love you. We thank you for your love for us. We thank you that you are the great and mighty God. And Lord, that you are a God who has a heart for the oppressed and for the hurting. And God, we thank you for Into the Light Ministry and ask that you would continue to provide for them their every need. Lord, that you would stir more people's hearts to participate in this ministry through giving, through prayer. And Father, we just ask that you would continue to use this ministry to show your love uh, to those who are hurting and oppressed. And Father, we lift up those who are victims. Lord, that you would strengthen them, that you would restore their hearts, and Father, that they would find hope in Christ. And we ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for being a part of our event. We are so glad that you are here. We also hope you'll be moved to share what you have learned today with others and those in your circle of influence. Help us spread the word, share the light. Into the Light was founded in 2013 by people just like you. People who saw a heart-wrenching, terrible thing happen to children in our state and were determined to do something about it. God led us to John 1, 5, which says the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. The trafficking of children is darkness. However, we have so much hope. The perfect love of Jesus Christ has overcome the darkness. The light of Christ is our hope as we daily face this darkness. That light is Christ in all of us, and our mission has always been to shine the light of Christ in His unconditional love. And our vision is to end child sex trafficking in Arkansas. Now I'd like to introduce you to Beth. She's been a vital part of the Intellight team for over seven years. She has a huge heart for those we serve and has trained social service agencies, teachers, law enforcement, and community partners and our staff advocates about the cause and how to identify victims. Right now, she's going to share with you a common scenario for how trafficking happens here. Do you ever wonder how so many children are trafficked here, where we live and raise our families, where Little League games are played on summer nights and church bells still ring on Sunday mornings? Let me ask you a few questions. Have you ever needed help and didn't know where to turn? Have you ever wanted to be a part of something but didn't feel you belong? Have you ever had a hard time paying for something you needed? Something you really needed? To some extent, these experiences are common to all of us. Now picture yourself in these situations without anyone or any place to turn. Now, suppose you are just a child. Have you heard the expression, a drowning person will grab a hold of anything? Allow me to paint a picture for you. Imagine you live in a very dark world. You've endured many hard things. You're only 15. But life for you has never been stable. You were being molested by your mom's boyfriend. So when you were 12, you ran away. The police found you and took you home but believed your mom when she said that you just didn't want to follow her rules. When you were 14, you got sent to foster care. You're out of foster care and back home now, but it's not safe. Your mom and her boyfriend are drunk every day. You don't know where your father lives or his phone number to call him to help. You spend most of your time online in your room, especially when they start fighting. Recently, you met someone online He told you how pretty you are about 20 times and you can hardly wait for your next message. Today, he told you he thinks he's falling in love with you. He talked you into sending a new photo, which you instantly regretted doing, but it was too late and he's so nice anyway. He wouldn't show anyone. Now your online friend has been talking about taking care of you. He wants to be your new family and how your heart longs for that. Finally, it happened. You got to meet your man in person. When you were hungry, he brought you your favorite pizza. When he pulled up in his fancy car, you couldn't believe it. 
He gave you some money and kissed you. He told you he loves you and, and wants you to live with him. He says he wants to marry you. He's older, but he's so handsome. A little time passes and he does more than bring food now. He picks you up and buys you nice clothes and you're having sex with him. You're sure that you're gonna marry him anyway, so it's, it's all right. He says he'll love you forever. This time when your mom's boyfriend beats up both of you, you called your boyfriend and he took you home. At last, it's so exciting to have your own place and to be in love. It's beginning to feel like all your dreams are coming true. Yesterday, he had a friend over and after talking you into taking drugs, he asked you to have sex with his friend. You didn't want to, but you did, and you felt awful afterwards. Tonight, he hit you for complaining. That's never happened before. He says he's so sorry for hitting you. He says money is tight and he was just stressed. He says you need to help pay the bills, but you don't have an ID or a car to get a job. He says he knows how you can make a lot of money and you owe him anyway. He says you have to pay for the drugs, clothes, and food. You love him, so of course you want to help. Now you have to have sex with anyone he says, and if they complain, he hits you hard. He says he's the only one who will ever love you, no matter how you look or how bad a person you are. He told you you were ugly and skinny again, but this time when you cried, he said he was sorry and bought you a new dress. He says you gotta look pretty cause you're his lady and you'll make more money if you dress sexy. Yesterday, he took you to get a tattoo of his name. He said he wanted the world to see that you are his and that made you feel so special. Now he takes you to have sex with lots of men and he's got another girl living with you. He makes both of you do whatever he says. He says you'll always be his number one. You know this is just until things with money get better. If you work hard, you're sure that you can make enough to pay him back for all the nice things he's done for you. Of course, he keeps all the money, but says after you pay him back, he'll start saving for your wedding. He can't wait to marry you when you turn 18. This is one scenario of how trafficking frequently happens. I know it's dark and difficult to think about, but please don't be discouraged. With your help, change is happening. With your help through Into the Light, young people are overcoming these circumstances. What happened to them is not the end of their story. Please stay with us while we explain the bigger picture of sexual exploitation and trafficking in Arkansas. Hello friends, did you know that because of you and your support, Into the Light served over 170 children last year? Because of our increasing online world, unfortunately more children are falling prey to traffickers. Last year, Into the Light provided over 5,000 services directly to children in need in North Central and Northwest Arkansas, and there's still work to be done. That work often happens because of collaboration with other agencies and organizations. Here's more from our community partners. Hello, my name is Chris Moffitt and I'm a detective with the Bentonville Police Department. I am also a task force member with the FBI's Task Force on Child Exploitation and Human Trafficking. Thank you for your support of Into the Light. In the last few years, we have partnered to arrest traffickers that have victimized minors in Arkansas. These people are exploiters and because we work arm in arm, we can do so much more to stop them. Into the Light has been the driving force behind creating a child exploitation task force in this area. In preparation, they traveled to Texas and spoke with existing task forces to see how they function and collaborate with community partners. Partnering with advocacy groups like Into the Light has created a partnership with the community to enhance communication and to allow law enforcement and other agencies to better address allegations of child sex trafficking. Into the Light has created an environment that has improved children's confidence in speaking with law enforcement to share details of their trafficking to allow law enforcement to obtain information to facilitate investigations. Because of you, exploiters are being caught by law enforcement. 
Sadly, they leave a lot of wreckage behind in their victims. That's where Into the Light really shines. Into the Light has done an awesome job with informing and bringing awareness to our community. We started collaborating with a program that we have for girls called Girl Circle, and that's been a great collaboration that we've had with Into the Light. I think that's one of the, the biggest light that I could say that Into the Light brings to, to us is awareness. Into the Light started coming in presenting to us, it became apparent that we all are in a little bit of denial that it was going on in this area. I think that that's the key to making the community aware of, you know, what's going on is just the, the education and getting out there and talking about it and talking about uncomfortable things that most people don't want to talk about. I can think of three young ladies that are dear to my heart. Those girls know that they can call into the light no matter what the hour to be able to be free of this and to understand that they don't have to return back to that kind of life. So the more that we know, Into the Light can provide us with those tools. Into the Light really is like a lightning rod for our community. Hello, and thank you for caring about this cause and those that we serve. We know that abuse occurs within a relationship, so therefore healing must also occur within a relationship. For many of our clients, Relationships have been damaged, non-existent, or very unhealthy. Many of the youth that we serve grew up within the foster care system or in unstable homes. In addition to spending time in juvenile detention centers, mental health facilities, group homes, or on the run. As advocates, our goal is to provide stable, consistent, and unconditionally loving relationships. We want our children to know that they have worth and that they are cared for outside of a sexual or commercial relationship. We meet with them weekly and provide a care 24 hours a day, seven days a week. For many of our clients, they have experienced trauma and because of this, we know that they are in need of additional support, both mentally and emotionally. So by the time a client has reached the age of 18, we know that they have one healthy relationship with a trustworthy adult. Up until this point, many had experienced a counterfeit form of love given to them by traffickers and exploiters. The desired goal of our program is that they would see and experience the love of Christ modeled within us. We work hard to meet our clients' basic needs to make sure that they are given every opportunity to move forward, make good choices, and heal. Many clients up until this point said that they had very little hope for their future, but now have a sense of purpose and fulfillment for their life to come. By shining a light on the dark underworld of exploitation for the past five years, we are able to partner with children and to help them move from being a victim to being a survivor. Now I'd like to introduce our child advocates to share stories from actual children that we have worked with who would like to share their stories with both you and with the world. I wish my mom wanted me, not the money she got off me. I wish she loved me like she loves my siblings and son. I wish she didn't let her boyfriends touch me and beat me. She honestly never loved me even if she says she did. I wish she chose to keep me and not her boyfriend. I have had some issues in my life with trafficking abuse. I have been through a lot growing up and not having my parents. Going from home to home, running away, and feeling like nobody loves me. Going to boys for love. Since I was 12, I've been on my own and had to take care of myself. I didn't always make the best decisions. I was dying for love, and so when I went on the run one time, I sold myself for love and money. It was terrible. Just last year, I started talking to this older adult guy. I thought it was going to work out, but it didn't last. He beat me with cords, wood boards, threw chairs at me, and anything he could pick up. He called me names and cheated on me. It was terrible. I just wanted love, but now I'm locked up. When I finally ran away and got caught, the police thought I was just running to be running, but I wish that they knew that that was not the case. I have seen things in my life that no 17-year-old should have to see or go through. I just need some love, healing, support, and somebody to talk to. Teen girls and boys need a father figure in their life. 
Otherwise, they go looking for love and acceptance in the wrong places. I've been there and done that. I used to be in a relationship with this boy and he had a friend who used to bring all types of females to his apartment. They would do stuff with him and he would make lots of money off these girls. I never really had to do anything, but when I was in the run this recent time, there were a couple of times where I did stuff with boys just to have somewhere to sleep. I've told my mom about Into the Light. The two women that came to see me from your program were the very first people to come and visit. And so far, they were the last as well. Your car was the first letter from anybody as well, even family. When I was being trafficked, my emotions were always crazy. I never really understood what I was feeling at the time. Being that my pimp was my mother, I really didn't know what was happening at the time. My self-confidence on a daily basis was consistently going down. At the time, I didn't feel like I deserved anything better. Overcoming trafficking is not an easy thing. It takes time and effort. There will always be times when you think that there is nothing but that lifestyle. However, there is a way out. The most important thing is love and support. I thank God because I could have never done it without Into the Light. Into the Light has always been there for me. Whether it has been to vent or to cry, they have always been there. I just want to say thank you guys for all the things that you have done for me. The majority of who Into the Light serves are children, but I am blessed to be able to work with those who have become adults or came to us at 18 or 19 and needed help. Thank you for caring and giving to all those we serve. Long-term advocacy and mentorship is what allows these young people to continue to heal and move from victim to survivor. Additionally, we help parents who have discovered their child is headed down the path to becoming a victim. Our prevention program has been shared with countless children in this very connected world. The prevention program helps those children learn to avoid the lure of traffickers. We have supported parents, grandparents, and guardians in keeping their children safe. On behalf of all the children, adults, and families of those young people served by Into the Light, we want to say thank you. Now I'd like to introduce Jolisa, Into the Light's Development Manager. Thank you for being here. We are so grateful to everyone who will join us to shine a light on human sex trafficking of children in Arkansas. Thank you for taking the time to participate in our event, pray, and make a donation, and share this cause. It's so important for those who are hurt by this horrific crime. Did you know the average lifespan for someone being trafficked is only seven years? We hope you will join us in pushing back the darkness and investing generously in this life-saving work. If you already have a plan for what you were going to give, can we just encourage you to pray and ask the Lord if perhaps he has a different amount he'd like you to give? Perhaps he will lead you to step out in faith and become a monthly supporter and be a torch bearer. This is so important, this regular giving for this life-saving work. Perhaps he will lead you to include into the light in your financial or estate planning. You can leave a legacy and share the love and light of Christ with these children long into the future with your generous gift. No matter what he leads you to give, we are confident that God will multiply every gift, no matter how small or how large. Additionally, please follow us on Facebook and Instagram by taking the time to share and telling others about Into the Light, you are helping children go from victims to survivors. The darkness will not overcome the light. You can share the light. You can be a part of bringing hope to survivors and ending child sex trafficking. Now, I'd like to introduce Pastor John from Summit Bible Church for our closing prayer. Hey, thanks for being with us tonight, and uh, we appreciate your uh, heart for this ministry and, and desire to help, and um, we just thank you uh, for being a part. Uh, let's pray. Father, we thank you that you are the eternal God. Lord, you are holy, you are righteous, you are perfect in every way, and we just give you thanks. God, for those who are being trafficked right now, God, I ask that you would give them a peace, that you would help them to see you, that, um, that they would know your presence, and God, that you would deliver them physically out of bondage, but also 
Um, more importantly, we ask that you would spiritually deliver them from bondage. God, we ask for um, the same thing for the traffickers, Lord. That you would change their minds, that you would change their hearts. In Christ's name, amen.